Deep beneath the Philippine Sea, a chain of underwater mountains stretches for thousands of kilometers. For millions of years, these submarine ridges have acted as a natural defense system, weakening typhoons before they reach the Philippines. But something is changing. Recent super typhoons, Haiyan known as Yolanda, Rai known as Odette, and Goni known as Roli, reached the Philippines at unprecedented strength. The underwater mountains that once protected us are failing, not because they're disappearing, but because the typhoons are becoming so powerful they can cross them without losing strength. This is the story of the Philippines' hidden shield and why it's no longer working. The Western Pacific Ocean, east of the Philippines, is Earth's typhoon factory. Warm ocean temperatures year-round stay above 26.5 degrees Celsius. There's a vast expanse of open water stretching over 6,000 kilometers. These are perfect conditions for tropical cyclone formation. The statistics are staggering. 20 to 25 typhoons form in the Western Pacific annually. 8 to 10 directly affect the Philippines. We get more typhoons than any other country. A typical typhoon's journey goes like this. It forms near Micronesia, 3,000 kilometers east of the Philippines. It moves west-northwest across the Philippine Sea. It strengthens over warm open water. It encounters underwater topography. Then it makes landfall in eastern Visayas, or Luzon. The hidden shield consists of Benham Rise, also called Philippine Rise, and other Philippine undersea ridges. Benham Rise is a massive underwater plateau east of Luzon. Its size is 13 million hectares, larger than the entire island of Luzon. It rises from a 5,000 meter deep seafloor to just 50 to 200 meters below the surface. It was officially recognized as part of Philippine territory by the UN in 2012. How did they work? I'm using past tense intentionally. First mechanism was ocean current disruption. Underwater mountains disrupt ocean currents. Typhoons feed on organized circular water motion. The ridges create turbulence and eddies. Disrupted currents mean reduced typhoon strength. The effect was a 10 to 20% intensity reduction. Second mechanism was upwelling of cold water. Ridge slopes cause upwelling where deep water rises. Deep water is much colder, 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, versus 28 degrees surface temperature. Typhoons need warm water above 26.5 degrees to maintain strength. Cold water pockets reduce energy transfer. The effect was that core pressure increased and winds decreased. Third mechanism was wind shear generation. Airflow over underwater mountains creates atmospheric disturbance. Even underwater topography affects the air above. This creates wind shear with different wind speeds at different heights. Wind shear weakens typhoon structure. Fourth mechanism was wave energy dissipation. Large waves generated by typhoons encounter underwater mountains that break and scatter wave energy. This reduces storm surge potential. Historical evidence shows that before 2010, typhoons regularly weakened crossing the Philippine Sea. Category 5 storms in the open Pacific drop to Category 3 or 4 at landfall. A natural 20 to 30 percent intensity reduction was normal. Scientists documented this pattern for decades. What changed? The breaking point came in 2013 with super typhoon Haiyan, known as Yolanda. It formed as a Category 1 typhoon east of Benham Rise. Scientists expected weakening as it crossed the Philippine Sea. Instead, reality struck. It strengthened to Category 5 plus over the rise. At landfall, it had 315 km per hour winds, the strongest on record. The result was 6300 plus dead and Tacloban devastated. What scientists observed was shocking. Haiyan maintained strength directly over Benham Rise. Ocean temperatures above the ridge were 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. The upwelling mechanism failed completely. The typhoon actually intensified over the underwater plateau. It defied all historical patterns. Recent super typhoons have ignored the shield. Super Typhoon Goni hit in 2020 with peak winds of 315 kilometers per hour. It crossed underwater ridges without weakening. Super Typhoon Rai struck in 2021 with peak winds of 260 kilometers per hour. It crossed the Benham Rise area with no significant weakening observed. In the 2025 typhoon season, multiple strong typhoons maintained strength. Scientists confirm the pattern change is real. The natural defense system is compromised. Why is the shield failing? Climate change is the answer. 
Factor 1 is ocean temperature rise. Philippine sea temperatures increased 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius since 1990. This seems small, but the effect is exponential. Waters above Benham rise now stay at 29 to 30 degrees year-round. Even upwelled water is 24 to 26 degrees, still warm enough for typhoons. The cold water shock no longer occurs. Factor two is a deeper warm layer. Historically, the warm water layer was 50 to 100 meters deep. Now, warm water extends 150 to 200 meters deep. Upwelling brings up warmer water than before. Typhoons can now maintain strength despite upwelling. Factor three is increased ocean heat content. It's not just surface temperature, the entire water column is warmer. More energy is stored in the ocean overall. Factor four is stronger initial formation. Typhoons forming further east are already stronger. They're reaching category four to five before encountering ridges. Factor five is rapid intensification. Modern typhoons can strengthen 50 plus kilometers per hour in just 12 hours. They can cross ridges during the intensification phase. The data doesn't lie. The historical pattern from 1950 to 2010 showed average weakening crossing the Philippine Sea of 20 to 25 percent. The modern pattern from 2010 to 2025 shows average weakening of only 5 to 10 percent, which is minimal. Category 5 storms maintain Category 5 strength at landfall. What does this mean for the Philippines? More Category 5 typhoons are making landfall. There's less warning time as intensification happens faster. Greater destruction from each storm. Higher death tolls despite better preparedness. Overwhelm disaster response systems. Eastern Visayas is the first landfall zone for most typhoons. They now face full-strength super typhoons. Samar and Leyte are most vulnerable. The Bicol region is the second most affected area. Northern Luzon, including Batanes, Cagayan, and Isabela provinces, sees typhoons maintaining strength longer. Scientific projections show it gets worse. By 2030, one to two degrees Celsius additional warming is likely. The Philippine Sea could average 30 to 31 degrees. Category five plus storms will become normal. By 2050, in worst case scenarios, two to three degrees warming is possible. We could see potential for category six typhoons. Benham rise will be completely ineffective as a shield. We can't fix the underwater mountains. They're still there and functioning. They're just overwhelmed by climate change. Ocean temperatures are the problem. We can't artificially cool the Philippine Sea. The natural defense system is permanently compromised. What we can do is adapt, build for category five as the standard, not the exception. Enhance early warning with better rapid intensification prediction. Improve evacuation planning with mandatory evacuation for Category 4 plus. Build economic resilience with disaster insurance programs. Address the root cause by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. For millions of years, the underwater mountains of the Philippine Sea acted as a natural shield. But in just 20 years, that shield has failed. Not because the mountains disappeared, but because the ocean has become too warm for them to work. We're facing a new reality. Typhoons that form in the open Pacific now reach the Philippines at full strength. The shield that protected us is failing. The only defense we have left is preparation. 